and welcome to Joy in Our Town. I am so delighted that you've chosen to join us again today. It's a privilege to uh, spend some time with you sharing a good reason why you can have a smile on your face for living in Central Florida because there are good things happening right here in our town and Trinity Broadcasting Network wants to make sure that you, the viewing and audience of this Central Florida region, have the opportunity of hearing good reports on what God is doing and how God is at work in people's hearts and lives. I'm George Cope, and it's just a privilege for the next uh, 28 minutes to spend some time with you and to introduce to you uh, someone that is going to help share a good reason to smile while you live in Central Florida. Uh, Trisha Boris, it's so nice to have you, Thank you uh, on our program today. I hope that you feel comfortable and relaxed today. Now, Thank you're you. going to talk to us about education, and um, you have a master's degree, so you have some sense of understanding <laughs> in education. But what we really want to focus on today is something that is becoming uh, better known in our right. society, and we're going to talk about homeschooling. You are a veteran homeschool mom of 17 years. Now, I would think that the reason why homeschooling has become a great issue is because of the culture in which we live and the struggle with an educational system. What, what's going on in our culture and in education that would even make people want or make you want to homeschool your kids? Oh, you're, you're exactly right. There is a, a culture out there that is um, actually driving people to homeschool their children. And for us, the reason we picked homeschooling actually didn't have to do with that. And I think every family picks a different reason to homeschool. Um, we had just adopted a daughter from Vietnam and we wanted all our kids at home together just to get to know their younger sister. And But we fell in love with the idea of homeschooling and the way it transformed our family. Um, but as far as um, people homeschooling, some of, some of the reasons are because of the school system itself. And it's, there's a lot of kids in one class, um, one teacher, she can't, he or she cannot do it all. Um, character building is, is of utmost importance to a lot of families. Moral training that can't get done in just two hours a day, you know, if that's all you're spending with your kids. And so having that chunk of time at home can really give you the opportunity to build and pour into your child and disciple your child. And I think that's a, a very good thought because some people just sort of look at culture and say, well, I'm going to homeschool because I don't like what's going on in the school system. Some children may need that kind of educational system, which is more one-on-one -on -one for them. Would that Correct. be true? Absolutely. So, uh, again, there are multiplicity of reasons why people would choose to homeschool. Um, you know, my first thought is, uh, when I think about homeschooling, you have a master's degree in education, so I would have assumed that that would have been an easy decision, but obviously that's not the reason you chose. Uh, that would be my first question. If a, if a parent wanted to homeschool, do they have to have a degree in education to homeschool their kids? They do not. So parents who choose to homeschool do not have to have a degree in education. In most states, they do not even have to have a college degree. So um, I, if God has called you to homeschool, he's going to equip you. And um, anyone who has the desire to homeschool can homeschool. Okay. There's, and there's so much out there to help. Okay, well then let's define the term. Okay. Because when I think of homeschooling, I think of my kids, uh, my children that would be sitting with me at a table and I would be there. But what is homeschooling? What, what is the whole sort of understanding of homeschooling and yeah. the idea? I mean, the simple definition is homeschooling is schooling your children at home, like providing their education at home by their parents. Okay. And it looks different in every household. But it does require time from parents, um, who usually it's the mom who is the homeschooling parent. And um, yeah, you do sit at the table. There are times you're sitting at the table okay. doing school with your kids right. and they get up, they go over there, you, another kid comes and sits down, you're teaching them. They, but they do also learn to work independently. They learn to seek out answers when you're not available because you're working with someone else. Um, there's you know, so many pros too. To homeschooling, but the daily life, it looks different in every household. Okay. So uh, if, if you're going to educate them at home, then you have to have a system. So how would, how, how does the educational system come about? What, what do you choose as the way to educate your children? Okay. Um, there's 
a myriad of choices with that also. There are families who choose unschooling. There's families who choose more of a classical approach, which is much more structured approach to, to homeschooling. Um, but you do need a plan. So you need to kind of look at what you want to fill your child with by the time they graduate high school and kind of work backwards from there and, and build, build on that foundation. Okay, so let, let's take it back to you because you're the, right. you're the expert that we have here <laughs> in front of us today. Uh, so when you said we're gonna homeschool our children, how did you go about making the, not just the decision, you've already made the decision, but what were the steps that you had to go through to make sure that your children were going to get a good education at home? What did you do? Did you go research? Did you go talk to people? If there's somebody that is watching today that's saying, you know what, that sounds like something I need, how would I go about doing it? What would you suggest that they do? Today I would suggest seek out some homeschooling groups that are out there already and talk to families who are homeschooling. When we chose to homeschool, we actually didn't know one other family that was homeschooling. And so I just used the same curriculum that they were using at the private school for the first year or two. And I'm thinking it's kindergarten, first grade, I can't mess it up, right? That, that was my thought. So, so I just kind of built on that. And then here in Central Florida, we have a wealth of information. We actually host one of the largest homeschool conventions in the nation here in Orlando every year. And if you went to the convention and saw the curriculum available, you would be overwhelmed. It's like you would have to take a veteran homeschooler with you to, so that you don't become overwhelmed. But there's so many choices in curriculum, but picking out a curriculum would be one of the first things, that and just talking to other homeschool families, okay. to see how they do it. I, I have been around as a pastor formerly in our community. I know that uh, we had many of our parents that were homeschooling. So um, you're saying there is a network that people can join and be a part of. They're not lone rangers out there trying to homeschool by themselves. Right, you they? do not have to homeschool by yourself. Okay. There, there are so many groups out there. When I was homeschooling, we, we made our own co-op because we just met at the park. And all of a sudden you're there with other parents or moms and kids who are of school age. And it's like, hey, you don't by chance homeschool, do you? And then we built a little co-op that you know lasted a good three or four years. But nowadays there are Umbrella schools, which are actually called 600 schools that can you can sign up with. They can help hold you accountable. They can give you guidance when it comes to transcripts and high school classes. Um, they can actually provide classes for you, for your students to take. Um, really, you could Google homeschooling in your town and come up with a list of, of families that are homeschooling together that you could join their groups. Great. All right, so um, we, we say we're going to homeschool, but I, there's upsides and there's downsides to homeschooling, I would assume. Give me some of the, the pros, the upside of homeschooling. What would you say maybe are the top two, three, maybe even four reasons why a person should consider homeschooling? I, I, for me, I would say time. The time, not the time I give up um, from doing other things, but the time I get to spend with my children. Um, the time I get to really learn what makes them tick, how they learn, um, what their personality is really like. I really get to discover that because of all the time I get to spend with them. And for me, I and my husband too, we've both said we would not give up that, that time that we've had with them for anything. Um, I, I would say also just the ability to learn at their own speed. I had one son who I did not have to teach how to read. It was a blessing. He was the last one but he all on his own. But I also had another son who was reading below grade level up until sixth or seventh grade. And I mean like two years at least below grade level, but he didn't hate reading. He would still, we would just let him read. We'd read to him. So he was able to progress at his own pace. And right now he's our son who is doing a school of biblical studies and he is reading the entire Bible without commentary and writing his own commentary basically on, on each book of the Bible. So learning at their own speed, being able to develop their own interests, whether it's cooking or woodworking. Uh, my daughter actually had a school business when she was in middle school where she sewed backpacks and sold them and learned how to knit and sold scarves. She named her business. So things like that that you can delve into because you have the time to do it and you kind of know what makes your kid tick. So homeschooling, if I could repeat back what I'm hearing, homeschooling basically focuses on the skills and the abilities of the child to develop in their own way right. rather than being forced sort of like a square peg into a round right. hole a in a system mm -hmm. that doesn't work. Okay, so that's the pros. What are the, what's the downside? 
What's the cons to homeschooling? One of the cons, or I guess the cost of homeschooling, is the time. It does take time. Um, of course, it takes a lot longer to homeschool an eighth grader than it does a kindergartner or a first grader. But the time you put into actually schooling with them, looking at curriculum, picking it out, um, probably um, money for some families. You do have to buy your own curriculum. A lot of families give up an income because for most homeschool families, you're a one-income family. Um, those are probably the biggest, maybe criticism when you first decide to homeschool. I know we had a little bit of that from family members. That's and interesting. So you're saying that family and friends looked at you and thought maybe you were doing the wrong thing? Yep. I mean, they, they didn't know homeschooling. They hadn't seen products of homeschoolers. And, and our biggest critics are now our biggest supporters after they've seen our older ones graduate college and you know and they're like oh <laughs> so that that would be another question so you're if you homeschool your kids all the way through so were were they as good or above uh, students that they competed with that went through the traditional educational system when they got to college academically I, I would say they were average even but I will say what what stuck out was um, both my older boys who were in college they when they couldn't understand something they Googled the information, watched other professors teach it on YouTube because they knew how to seek out answers. They knew that it was their job to learn the material, whether their professor taught it in a way they could understand it or not. And so those kind of skills are hard to, you know, they, they just come from being at home, really from them having to learn a lot, you know, on their own and, you know, through high school, really working on projects. Um, I, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that there are people that are watching uh, Joy in Our Town today that are thinking, you know, I, I really would like that. Maybe my child needs that. I don't know if I can do that. What would you say then? We're going to have to take a break in a couple of minutes. Uh, but before we do, I, I want you to talk because I want you to encourage. What has been the greatest lessons you learned as a homeschooling mom? Not the kids. Right. Not the benefit to the kids. What was the benefit to you and your husband? Right. The biggest benefit to me would be the character building and not my kids' character building, although that's a huge part of homeschooling is we can character trumps academics. You can stop at any time and work on character issues. But God grew me through homeschooling more than he grew my kids when it came to character. Um, just seeing things in my children that are actually a reflection of me, the sin in me, and having to come to terms with that and deal with that. And so I would say... That, for me, that was the biggest thing, was character building, um, the way God worked through me in homeschooling, because it does take a lot to pour your life into your child like that and to work with them daily um, that many hours. Uh, my husband would, you know, definitely the quality time of family, just building a strong family together. So, so character, that, that's an interesting uh, um, word because we we don't have a lot of that in our culture in mm -hmm. which we live but that's something that we've got to work on the only way we're going to see a culture uh, changed positively the only way that lives are going to be productive it always comes back to character and so i i am really grateful that you highlighted that that's something that america right now yes. really needs to be well um, uh, Tricia, thank you for sort of helping us. We're, we've got more to talk about, okay. so we're going to have to take a break. And uh, after our break, we're going to come back, and Tricia is going to keep talking to us about education and the importance of working uh, with children and helping them to understand. I am really anxious to talk about possibly how did your children feel when you announced to them what it was going to be. But we're going to take a break. We're so glad that you've joined us today on Joy in Our Town. It's because of people like Tricia that you can smile. There is something positive happening in Central Florida. And uh, we want to make sure here at TBN that you are aware of that. So would you please stay with us? We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. So you join us. Don't go away. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. Yes. Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to GetSchool.com.
Welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm George Cope, and it's a privilege to have with me today Trisha uh, Boris, who is a, a lifetime kind of mom. 17 That's right. years. That's a long time. Thank How you. many children did you homeschool, Trisha? I am, I have four. But one is still only eight years old. So okay, so you're still, I'm still doing in the process. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, so. uh, and I, I, I know that uh, the the smile on your face simply says, and the reason you're here, that you don't see it as a, a struggle, but you see it as a privilege right. in the midst of it. Uh, I know we we were talking about homeschooling, and we want to continue to talk about that. And I want to talk about life skills. But uh, before we get to the life skills side, when you announced to your children you were going to homeschool, what was their reaction to you? They were pretty young, actually, so I don't know that they were kindergarten, first grade, okay. the older two, and then I had a one-year-old, so um, they were fine. Okay, <laughs> they so were fine with staying home with mom. <laughs> did you ever have them say somewhere along uh, the journey, oh, mom, I want to go to school like everybody else? I, we did talk about it. Like, there were times when, there's times when all of us wonder, what would that path have been like? What would that path have been like? And, you know, so we would talk about the pros and cons, and we'd always stay, we all of us would still choose homeschooling. And now that I have two that, one that's graduated college and one that's in the middle of college, one that's almost done with high school, um, they would not trade. As a matter of fact, my oldest just got married last year and he and his wife are planning on homeschooling. So. Wow, amazing. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, you were, we talked about pros and cons in the first segment. In this segment, let's talk about the whole idea of the development of life skills. Um, Within the context of time you had, because time now you control time in that kind of an Correct. environment, it gives you the opportunity to focus on life skills. What, what are life skills in, in your definition, and what were the, the ways that you went about helping your children and do help your children develop life skills? Right. I, would, I think life skills are simply just the skills that we all need every day to deal with the challenges of everyday life. And it could be anything, you know, because you look at today's world and just the increasing speed of change. It just seems to be, change just seems to be happening quicker and quicker. And I even think about when I got my first smartphone. I didn't want it. <laughs> I didn't want to have to learn something new. I didn't, so my husband made me go into my room, shut the door, study it, get, you know, get to know it. But, um, but any kind of skills like that, adaptation, just learning to adapt to situations and communication skills. Writing and speaking persuasively, really, especially for believers, that you can speak and write truth and get people to understand why it's true. And so those are, you know, some of the skills. The idea of willpower, just being able to put first things first, do what has to be done first. Yeah. I, I, again, the context is... Um, you're doing it in the environment of the home, which is a significant place because then you're controlling sort of what goes on in the midst of that. Um, those skills are, are for you, you grow up because you, I would assume you were educated in a traditional setting, I was. correct? Okay, so you had sort of a background of a traditional setting for yourself. What, what did you see that made these life scale developments easier in homeschooling than maybe you experienced when you were in school. Have you ever thought about that? I, I have. Some of them I just didn't receive in school. Um, oh, so you didn't even experience it? Some of them, yes, okay. absolutely. But I did from my parents. Okay. So, and, that, and then the whole point is, wherever your students are being schooled, parents are still their first teacher. And parents still have a responsibility. It, it's our job to teach our children. Um, whether, no matter which school they're in, what, what school setting they're in. So, um, you know, they, just relationship skills and, you know, like I, like I said before, just the, the willpower to know, to set goals, to write down goals, those kind of life, life skills, those are, those are what I, I would call life skills. What do you say, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw you a curve okay. here, okay, you ready? How, what would you say to a person who says, you know, Tricia, I think you're just trying to stick your head in a hole and you're trying to protect your kids from the real world out there. Right. Have you ever had anybody talk I, to you like that? Yes. Yes, we, we have. And, and the idea is not to, it is to protect them. It is to protect them while they're There's growing up. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. That's the reason wrong. why I asked the question. Right. Okay, Absolutely. Keep going. So we, I, I believe in like sheltering them to a point. Mm -hmm. But as they get older, we do discuss the big issues. We do watch the news together. We talk about what's going on in the world. We get to do it from a biblical worldview, a biblical point. We get to see what does God say about this? How do you feel about this? We don't even necessarily teach our kids what to think, 
but we do help them take ideas and, and what they hear and lay it across the Word of God to see how, how it lines up with that. And then they come up with their own beliefs based on what does the Word of God say about it. And so, and, and it prepares them to go out into the world to make a difference. That's what I want my kids to do, go out into the world, not to... Yeah. So what, again, I hear you saying is, is that homeschooling doesn't cloister them into a mindset that we're going to be always sheltered and safe over here in the side. What you're saying is, is that it is a controlled environment of training that better prepares them right, to be to able out. to take their place in culture. Jesus did Absolutely. not call us... Uh, he did, uh, the, the scripture talks about coming apart and being separate, but that's not isolationism. Correct. That, that's about uh, just understanding that we are different and we have values yes. and, and uh We and live beliefs. different, but that's what makes us the light. That's right. right? That, right? There, there you go. And so <laughs> okay. you believe your children get that better than they could have any other way. I, that, that's what we believe, yes. That's okay. why we, one of the reasons we stayed with homeschooling. So... What role then does education play in helping someone ultimately develop these life skills? Was that, is that built into the curricula of, of homeschooling that life skill development is sort of at foundation along with educational information that, that this character building goes hand in hand with it? I don't know if there, there, there is curriculum out there, but I think it just also comes from being a parent and being a parent on your knees and, and just asking God for wisdom. Because you look, at, you look at our world and there does seem to be a gap between what kids acquire in the classroom and what they actually need in the workforce and what they actually need um, to build families and relationships and what they actually need even for volunteer work. And there's some kind of gap there. And a lot of it, I believe, is these life skills we were just talking about. And somebody has to pick that up. And, and really, it probably is parents' responsibility more than, than the school setting. So whether you're a homeschooling parent, public school, private school, this is part of your job mm. to build these skills up in, in your children. And if a parent is not homeschooling, uh, can they still develop these, kill, these life skill issues uh, in their children's a lives? Absolutely. You just... You, you talk about things, you, you study communication, you study sp public speaking. If your child's not a good writer, then you focus on that, you know, when, when you have time off from school and you learn how to be a better writer. You learn, too, how to be a better writer. Um, I learned more in homeschooling my kids education-wise than perhaps I learned in my first K through 12 grade years, you know. So um, ab absolutely, parents can pick up the slack or fill in the gaps. It's very important what you're saying, that parents take an interest, whether they homeschool or not. Absolutely. They've got to take the interest in their kids' lives. Um, I, I, again, can I give you another something we Go didn't right prepare? Ahead. But I, I just feel, did you ever in a moment... Um, go through a difficulty personally in saying to yourself, boy, this is bigger than I thought, or, you know, because sometimes we, we say we're going to do it, and then we start, and then we go through the valley. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to us a bit about the valleys that you may have walked through as a mother homeschooling children. Right. There, there were times, there was one time specifically I was ready to quit. <laughs> um, I had actually called our pediatrician, asked for our son's records so we could put him in school. We were just battling. You know, it was just hard. And that goes back to the whole character issue. It, was, it had nothing to do with academics, my ability to teach or their ability to learn. But it was all character issues and relationship building. And um, that was the year the hurricanes came through. And they never sent his records. And by the time I called them back, we had, we had worked through some of our issues. But he was a middle school boy at the time. And so it, it went back to just working on character issues and relationship issues. And I'm glad we didn't quit. Well, life is tough. And is. Uh, the it way is. it is, you know what? It's working through. We can't, we can't turn our kids over to a public society or any society and say, you raise them. That right. was God given to yep. us. And I believe that homeschooling takes that to a level where parents that feel that is so important for them will take responsibility to do that. You know, uh, we, we just have about three minutes left. And so I want you as a mom, I am absolutely convinced that there are homeschooling moms that may be up early or staying up late watching. They picked up this program and it's airing now and they just need somebody to encourage them 
and support them and pray for them. Would you just take, uh, just before absolutely. we leave, would you just talk to some moms or grandmothers or kids that are watching and encourage them about this process and this step? Absolutely. Oh, you sweet homeschool mamas out there. Um, I, I really do want to encourage you to stay the course. If you've been called to homeschool, then I have no doubt that God is going to equip you to do it. And are there going to be hard days? There's going to be hard days. But always remember to go back and look at where you've come from. Look at how much you've already taught your children. Look at the relationships that you're building. And just persevere. Persevere through the hard days. And, um, and make it fun. Find ways, find ways to make it fun. So let me, let me just pray with you real quick here. Father God, Lord, I just ask your blessing on the homeschool moms that are out there and the homeschool families, God, who are just bravely raising up a generation of, of people to serve you, God, people to know you. And I just ask your blessing on them. I pray that you give them the wisdom that they need to make the decisions. I pray that you just empower them, God, with um, a passion and an ability to, to do this job and to do it well. And we just thank you that you go before us and you go behind us. And it's in Jesus' holy name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Tricia, thank you so much for thank being you, with George. us on Joy in Our Town. It's people like you, that beautiful smile that you have that gives the reason for the whole community to smile because there are people out there families like yourself, you and your husband, that are investing the quality of life, not in just making a living, but making right. a family spiritually productive in the world. And I want to congratulate you, and I want to thank you for joining us today here on Joy in right, Our thank Town. Thank you, George. I want to thank you, the, the viewers. You come to us every week. It's a privilege to be here. I want to thank Trinity Broadcasting Network. They are so gracious to focus on education and health and finance, and that's the reason why Joy in Our Town is here. We want to be an inspiration. We want to bring a smile to your face. There's too much bad news in the world, and so these 30 minutes every week together give you a good reason and a good glimpse to know that there are people that are living a godly life that are seeking to to do what God wants them to do, and they are making our community a better place. And so thank you for joining us today. It's always a privilege uh, for uh, us to be in your home. We don't take it for granted. We, we are appreciative that you let us come in. And I'm gonna ask you for one more thing. When you think about Trinity Broadcasting Network, you pray for them because they are gracious to give us this opportunity. Well, my time is up for this week. Thanks for joining us on Joy in Our Town. We'll be back here next week, same time, same place. So until then, don't ever forget, God loves you. He really does. Bye for now. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network. Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.